Welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's Dr. Rosie, I'm a family physician here working in Montreal, Quebec. My main practice consists of family medicine, general family medicine practice and some aesthetics. I'm currently very deep into my third trimester of my second pregnancy and I'm sharing a lot about medical aspects of pregnancy in my YouTube, on my YouTube channel these days. However, that's not all my YouTube channel is about. It's about basically health and wellness and other advice on how you can just better your life overall. So if it's your first time here, welcome. Please subscribe, uh, like, comment, share what else you want to learn from me. And if you're a returning client, welcome back. Hey, today uh, I'll be diving into some of the most common symptoms of the third trimester. So welcome mamas and mamas to be. Uh, here's a little heads up of what's coming for you. I think it's nice to know, you know, we always feel a little bit more in charge and prepared when we are aware of things. So the more we're aware, the more you can help yourself. Um, at least that's my view on things rather than getting fully surprised. There's a lot of stuff I wish I would have been told uh, at the beginning of my first pregnancy or during my first pregnancy also before having the baby but um you live and learn so i'm here to live and learn and share with you guys some of the common symptoms and some of the solutions to them first things first i'm going to go from a head to toe approach because i thought that was just the clearest and easiest to help you guys visualize and you know approach these symptoms i don't know maybe maybe just in my head my kid's sleeping i'm currently in my living room making the most out of this you know time that i've got Pretty proud of myself to be this consistent with YouTube so yay for me uh, and my husband's studying for an exam this week so yeah I'm solo and here to film for you guys so um, let's dive into it symptom number uno is of course fatigue so you all know in your first trimester there was this like boom of fatigue that just hits you like a pile of bricks well it's sort of coming back to you um at you in your third trimester so second you kind of get that wave of energy for the most part obviously remember that this is like generalities there are you know everything is case-based in a pregnancy and every pregnancy is different but for the most part you are flipping tired in your first trimester and it hits you like out of nowhere and you need this extra sleep and extra energy uh, on top of the fact you may have nausea and vomiting, but that's besides the fact, but then back in your third trimester, it just comes back. So what I'm experiencing is I would say by 12, 1 PM, I need to nap most days. And that's even after getting a good solid eight hours of sleep, solid. We'll talk about that. Um, <laughs> so fatigue is intense and happens for many reasons. I mean, it depends also like, you know, what's your nutrition like, how much coffee do you drink? People often crash when they drink too much coffee. Um, are you still working? Are there other children that are, you know, in your life that you're taking care of? These things will all contribute to how fatigued you are, but just in general, your body's still growing and saving about half a pound a week until the end. Um, your blood pressure may be dropping as well. You're overall retaining more water. So you're just more fatigued, normal. Now to add to that crap, uh, is something called insomnia. So you may or may not be lucky enough to experience it, but it's super common throughout pregnancy, but I've found it significant mostly now, this last trimester, and it happens for many reasons. So number one, waking up to pee, ding, ding, ding. Try to pee before you sleep and try not to drink too close to when you go to sleep. Number two, well, waking up with leg cramps. So that's been happening to me recently. I don't even remember if it happened the first pregnancy, but basically I wake up and I basically, and I literally have a Charlie horse in my calf, which I have to like massage and punch and stretch. Um, it's happening less and less since I stretch my calves every day, maintain hydration and take your prenatal vitamins. Sometimes low magnesium has something to do with this. So if you're taking your supplements well, you are hydrating and you're stretching before you go to bed, you may have less chance of getting these terrible cramps and it'll literally stay sore for the following day or two maybe that's my workout but no i think it's actually the heart child horse so yeah that'll wake you up at night vivid dreams so I, I don't know but it happens in pregnancy like these intensely vivid dreams that will wake you up so that's where i'm at and so because of all this insomnia you're more fatigued in the daytime and it's a vicious cycle so if you got a nap nap and if you have the privilege and capacity to do so or take a break some point in your day take that nap is my number one advice making my way downtown shortness of breath so insomnia fatigue i feel like again if obviously if it seems abnormal to you, you always speak to your doctor about these things 
but in a general kind of way, shortness of breath is super common. And why? Because we know that we need lungs to fill with air in order to provide oxygen to the rest of our bodies. Okay. Now, because of the growing belly underneath the diaphragm, which is a huge muscle that goes horizontally across your chest, it's pushing up on that diaphragm, which has less room to accommodate those lungs that are filling with air. So it's like always at this lower capacity. Imagine instead of doing, your lungs are going, so you're just short of breath with less activity. Anyway, common, don't beat yourself up over it. Just take breaks and do things differently. So I don't work out the same way, uh, less intense. I take breaks. I stand a lot of the time because I feel like by sitting, you're also compressing that abdominal thoracic ratio. <laughs> so if you stretch it out, you kind of have more chance of not being short of breath. Moving my weight down. Reflux. Uh, so acid reflux also gets worse in the last trimester because of the same reason ish. So the baby's pushing and the uterus and everything that's growing your abdomen on your stomach, your stomach sits right under that diaphragm that I just spoke about. It's in your abdomen, but it's the first organ on the top over there. So if it's being squished all the time, it's also pushing on your esophagus, which therefore pushes up your food. So acid reflux sucks. Um, you can check another video I have that gives you some solutions for that. Definitely check it out. I'm living on Tums, small meals, and really avoiding triggers. For me, it's been eggplants, anything tomato saucy, -y, fried stuff, and high fat things. So eating cookies is not really helping me, but balance. You may as well be experiencing, I definitely am, a decreased appetite, which is for the same reason that stomach is being compressed, so there's less space to fill it with food, right? It just makes sense. So although we generally on average gain about half a pound a week towards the end, throughout the last trimester until the end, um, you may not see like a rapid boom increase in weight gain as you would maybe expect in the last trimester. You may, but you may not if you're eating less. Is what I'm saying. So yeah, I just kind of break it down into small snacks throughout the day because I'm f even though I've got an appetite, like I love a burger and fries and pickles and salad, all the things, but I just can't fit that. So break it down and then enjoy it later. Postpartum stretch marks. Also in a previous video with some advice on how to find the solution to those prevent, treat, whatever. But this is basically going to happen throughout. So throughout, I mean, the most common areas are, yes, your breasts, your abdomen, so your belly, which is stretching the most, your hips, your thighs, your butt. And those are the main spots where women tend to get, but basically any place where you're gaining weight rapidly is going to be more likely to develop stretch marks. And that's cool. Like, it's fine. I'm just telling you, it's going to happen in your third trimester if it didn't happen in the previous two trimesters and if you're you know inclined to them you may be lucky enough not to get any and that's cool but if you do it's definitely going to happen and happen faster throughout the last trimester totally normal i'm moving my way down lightning crotch it's a thing not really a medical term at all and when you ask your ob about it they'll just be like oh yeah normal especially if your ob is a man never experienced it themselves oh yeah normal and it is normal, but it feels basically like electric shocks down to your crotch because of what? Because that pelvis and sacrum, and I wish I had a skeleton with me, which is accommodating for that growing fetus, which is moving down the birth canal, mm -hmm, famous birth canal. As it moves down, it also compresses nerves. So sacral nerves around your buttock region, but which basically innervate, I don't know what that noise is, noise is. innervate your pelvic floor region, which involves your vagina, your vulva, and all that stuff. So goody goody gumdrops, you're gonna feel some electric shocks here and there, and it's normal. So uh, stretch it out, take deep breaths, find positions that make you comfortable. Oh yeah, back to the insomnia thing, other than, you know, drinking, peeing before you go to bed and such. The leg cramps, I told you what to do about that. Well, the vivid dreams, I can't tell you anything. Um, but also to find sometimes it's just discomfort and that's why you're waking up with insomnia. So find the pillows and find the position that suits you. If you got to get out of the bed and not sleep with your partner, do it. If you, I personally am sleeping on my left side, which is truly the safest also and most comfortable, uh, with a pillow between my legs, giving my pelvis a bit more room to accommodate this growing baby. Um, so that might help with these crotchy symptoms. 
Next is some pelvic, I don't know, excuse the noise if you guys hear it. Pelvic and sciatic pain. Again, same reason, stretching and accommodating of this fetus moving down the canal. I've got a video with some stretches, so I'll link that here. Towards the end of the video, you'll see a bunch of exercises you can do. Okay, you could do to help with these pains, aches and pains. Um, now, I went down, I'm gonna move all the way down. Swollen feet, oh my God. Uh, I'm not experiencing it, excuse me horribly this time around but if you're standing throughout the day and even if you're not but especially if you are swollen feet are super common and wear compression socks i might have a pair here sorry i don't they're in my bedroom but compression socks you can buy them at the pharmacy with or without a prescription they get real tight on your calves i will spare you the view uh, you wear them throughout the day, not at night, and they kind of keep some of that swelling down. Also, lifting your legs at the end of the night could be helpful. Putting them up on a pillow on a little elevation when you sleep at night. But it's just like, you know, it feels heavy. It feels uncomfortable. It's not dangerous unless it's red, hot, swollen, or you see large, yeah, swelling. Then see your doctor, obviously, because pregnant women are at higher risk of DVTs, deep vein thromboses. But swelling in and of itself... Um, bilateral swelling is very common in pregnancy before i end this chat nesting so this is not a physical but more a psychological thing you will feel the need to prepare your space for the new human that is about to join your life normal just don't lose your tits because um after having experienced this the first time i do know for a fact that so many things can wait and so many things could get done once baby arrives it is not the end of the world if you don't have your crib if not all your clothes are clean and folded yet it's all good baby actually needs very little to survive and thrive so don't beat yourself up over it if you're not finding that free time and if you do then just do a bit every day so you don't feel overwhelmed and you're not exhausting yourself coming from someone who tries to do it all in a day i'm being super honest with you guys and then finally 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 what else will you get in your last trimester is a lot of unsolicited comments and advice and feedback from people that you did not ask for. So, um, take it all with a grain of salt. I hear you ladies. It's not fun to be asked, you know, what are you having? Which is fine, everyone asks that. I'm having a boy, I'm having a girl. Oh, but did you, did you want that or did you want something else? And are you gonna try for something else down the line? Like as if biology is a choice we make, I mean, in the 21st century, you probably could, but if you didn't, most likely you didn't, uh, to ask that is just so silly, I find. And so it doesn't piss me off per se. I just think people should be a bit more mindful of their silliness or other things like, oh, you're looking big or you're looking small or you're, you know, just all these comments like our body's changing. We know it. Don't need you to tell me about it. But then to add and throw it on us, it's just like, okay, okay, what am I supposed to make of this? You know, anyway, unsolicited advice you know, on your looks, on how hard it's going to be. Um, get all your sleep now because really you're going to get none when baby comes. Like, okay, please relax, relax. Yeah, people don't need to exaggerate this whole thing. Like we all know babies wake up at night. It's okay. It's happening whether I want it or not. So to warn me about it and tell me get sleep now is going to make no difference. I'm trying. Okay. But my legs are cramping. So I'm doing my best. Okay. And just being told like, it's going to be so much harder with two three or four, however multiple kids you might already have, is useless advice. Again, this is my two cents, but unsolicited advice will come your way, probably throughout the whole pregnancy, but especially at the end where it's like, oh, you look tired, you should stop doing things. And that's okay, people are usually well-intentioned, like they really do want the best for you. They just don't think before they speak and c'est la vie. So it's coming for you ladies. Other than that, I really wanna wish you all congratulations, a safe and easy and healthy pregnancy more than anything. These are symptoms most often not dangerous. The most important thing is that you and baby are healthy and doing well and growing and, you know, following up with your doctor and making sure that you're following all the recommendations and that you make it to the end, you know, or somewhere near the end. Go science. That's about it. Uh, see you soon for my next episode. Look out, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss it and uh, take it easy, ladies.